Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my full Rick and Morty season seven, episode seven video. There are a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references. Also, I am sure they're going to turn that Kawato Morty with the spider mech into a radio controlled toy or some kind of toy. Kawato's for everyone. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes and careful for spoilers if you have not seen the episode yet. We'll just start at the beginning, work our way through shot by shot, talking about Easter eggs, WTF moments, all the Kawato jokes. The episode title Wet Kawat Mort Summer is a reference to the movie Wet Hot American Summer and the Total Recall movie with all the Kawato stuff. The episode is mostly a Morty and Summer team up episode with not a lot of Rick helping them out outside of setting up the basic premise and then showing up at the end of the episode to rescue them. Wet Hot American Summer didn't really have any kind of overarching plot or anything like that other than being a slice of life about the crazy summer a bunch of kids had at camp, so the episode is largely just a Total Recall parody of all the Kawato stuff. Kawados within Kawados within Kawados. It's also the very first episode in the entire series that uses Summer's name in the episode title. All the other family members have had their names in episode titles before. The cold open starts with a bit about Summer doing chores for Rick from the chore wheel, just cleaning off a bunch of alien blood and guts from his spaceship, making it seem like this is taking place right after he returned from another adventure that happened between episode 6 and episode 7. Last week at the end of the episode, they also joked about them going back on regular adventures again, so presumably they've had a couple since then. And Summer doing chores from Rick's chore wheel is also a running thing with her. This is meant to be different from the other wheel that Rick has that they introduced in previous seasons, which had Jerry's name on it, so like the entire family spins that wheel and uses it a way to pick adventures. Summer's chore wheel, which it also sounds like Morty uses sometimes, is like her version of Morty's free adventure punch cards. Basically, Rick making her do chores as work in exchange for him doing things for her or making things for her whenever she wants. The way that she talks about it, it makes it seem like she's been using that or they've been using that chore wheel for a long time. She sorts a bunch of amulets for him, some of them being magical ones with special powers and curses, some of them being regular ones. She even has a magical book that Rick gave her to deal with any of the curses. If it wasn't clear, even though Rick and Morty mostly deals with science-based stuff and scientific explanations for more cosmic stuff, like explaining gods in scientific ways, Actual magic does exist in the Rick and Morty universe, as do different planes of existence. Like there is an actual devil, which they introduced during season one, and an actual god on the other side of that. Just based on the background here, it seems like she's doing this on the first sub-basement level in the garage, like right below the garage. She chops up a random alien in the backyard, not sure where it came from or what Rick plans to do with all the alien parts. Her cleaning up the Morty's Mind Blowers room with a bunch of the broken vials is a reference to them having another Morty's Mind Blowers adventure before this that we just didn't see at some point. And the fact that everything's broken in here implies that the exact same thing happened, like the adventure led to the same result with them fighting each other, breaking a bunch of the memories. I think they also reference this at the end of the last Morty's Mind Blowers episode, like it happens all the time and it always ends with one of them or both of them trying to kill each other or themselves. This is this scenario three? Uh, w what's that and who, who are you? Oh man, it's a scenario four. Rick references having just upgraded Summer's ponytail, giving it some Inspector Gadget powers, which they pay off later in the episode, like Morty's body turning into things. Rick does that too. He's got all these Inspector Gadget parts, which they also use later in the episode. It makes sense that Summer would get some of those too. He's also created ghost goggles for her that he said he put in the vending machine so she can see ghosts. There have been a lot of ghost references this season in particular, like first Rick creating actual ghosts, then people turning into ghosts, and now people doing more Ghostbuster-like stuff, just seeing them. She gets him to make the attribute slider, which is based on the core role-playing game stats, which is why when she wants to raise one stat, another stat has to be balanced to decrease, because she has a fixed number of total attribute points. They said it the whole bit about the Frisbee golf party calling it froth. Apparently, it's like the most popular thing you could possibly do at their high school outside of like football. Most of my experience with Frisbee-based sports were actually Ultimate Frisbee, which is more of like a college sport, which is where I learned to play it for the most part. My experience with it was more like Brad's in that I had a regular main sport and just played Ultimate Frisbee out of the regular season, like I was an NCAA swimmer. Frisbee golf is basically just like an extension of Ultimate Frisbee, but it is a real sport that people play. They pay off another scene from the intro when she lifts him going full tropey jock versus nerd on him. This is the second intro scene we've seen this season. Rick provides more context on how the slider works too, saying that she's raised her strength and lowered her intellect so much that when he says he'll kill her, she doesn't understand him. Morty gets jealous, wanting the stat slider too so that he can impress Trisha and she'll make him seem better in front of the whole school so he'll get way more popular. 
claiming that he's already helped Rick a bunch. He references helping him kill Prime Rick during episode five, which Summer then also comments on. I helped you kill your nemesis. Oh, you guys found him? Rick uses another new device, which causes him to vanish so he doesn't have to continue the conversation, but it only sends him to the trash bag. Then part of the joke here is that Jimmy, the rest of the school, are hardcore Frisbee golf fans. Like, they don't stop talking about Frolf during the entire episode. Every time you see them, it's all about Frolf. All the posters, all the party favors, even the cake, all the signs around the house are references to Frisbee golf. They've even got a special Star Wars parody poster that says, May the course be with you, in a banner that says the same thing. In the backyard, there's a banner that says Ultimate Snacks, which is a reference to Ultimate Frisbee. Maybe the writers of the episode are just really big fans of Ultimate Frisbee. Summer uses the stat slider to almost hook up with Jimmy till Morty tries to cock block her. Notice in the backyard, one of Summer's best friends, or maybe former best friends, Nancy is there, along with Trisha, who's also one of her best friends at the party, that Morty is trying to use to get more popular. He turns her intellect way up, giving her the oversized brain sticking out of her skull a little bit, and Morty giving himself abs is also something that they did during the Knight Family episode in a previous season. Summer, you want to drop this bowling ball on my abs? Hell yeah, I'm only human. Ugh, watch this. <laughs> there are a couple jokes about them using their different attributes against each other with her making the trick shot against them. Also, the equations here is something that they did when they visualized powers during that superhero family TV show where the kid basically had the exact same ability and they would visualize his powers the exact same way. When Summer takes him down with the crazy trick shot, Jimmy says this is what Froth is all about because literally it's a game all about trick shots. Then their powers cause their genes to combine, turning Morty into Summer's Kuwato. And it also turns out she's never seen Total Recall before because everybody at the party but her knows what Kuwato is. Morty saying open your mind is also a reference to what Kuwato used to say during the Total Recall movie. In the movie, he could actually speak normally, but in the context of the episode, Morty and all the other Kawatos can only say, open your mind, even though they're trying to say full sentences. Open your mind! Sounds like we're down to clown. Back at home, Rick's watching more interdimensional cable. The Caker Fake Show is a parody of Is This Cake, which went crazy on social media a couple years ago with people creating cakes that look so lifelike, nobody could tell whether or not something was cake or not. Even though they imply this contestant is going to kill the other one because he's screaming that he's real, Rick later reveals that they're sentient cakes on the show that always keep you guessing, quote unquote. So sometimes the people screaming that they're not cake are still just cakes. I'm not a cake! I'm not a Marathon of cake or fake. The, the sentient cakes, they, they keep you guessing, you know? One of the other funny things, too, is that there's so much interdimensional cable that you find them watching randomly in different episodes, but they haven't done an actual interdimensional cable three episode. In fact, back during season three, when they started doing Morty's Mind Blowers, that was like the episode that they did instead of doing interdimensional cable three. Since then, we've had a number of seasons and a number of more Morty's Mind Blowers parodies. Rick breaks the fourth wall again when he says he thought the slider thing was going to be the whole thing this week. That's him referencing that he knows he's a fictional character inside a TV show. He also does it later in the episode, too. Summer does more chores from the chore wheel to get Rick's help. This time, she's on the level with the plant-based creatures. She uses her social media to get the targeted ad learning about the Kawado Club, which winds up being a bit of a meta joke. So part of the joke here is that her phone was listening to her when it was in her pocket. Like, even when her phone was off, it was listening to her. It heard her talking about her Kawado, everybody making fun of her Kawado, and that's how it knew to give her a Kawado ad on her Instagram. And even though it's just meant to be a funny bit in the context of the episode, in real life, that is a real thing. Your phone or some apps on your phone can use your microphone, even when your phone's in your pocket, to listen to what you're saying and give you targeted ads based on that. So even if you haven't visited any websites or made any kind of searches based on any terms, even if you just talked about it, then suddenly you get an ad for the thing that you just talked about. That's why. Now everybody's going to be super paranoid about the stuff they talk about near their phones. The other joke here, too, is that the ad really was predatory because the club was the one that hosted Kenneth and all the people that would just steal quadros and harvest them and sell them on the black market. Because later, as they reveal at the club in the private VIP room, everybody in the VIP room were people who bought quadros on the black market and then had them attached to their bodies. So, like, literally everybody here is part of that evil black market ring. They probably created that predatory ad looking for other Kawados to harvest. And every time somebody gets an ad on Instagram, they're going to think twice about like what it's actually trying to sell them. Trisha also posts a meme based on a real-life meme, how it started and how it's going. You see that all the time all over social media. 
Summer takes a space cab to the other planet where the club is and meets the other girl, then who gets captured, she winds up saving, and then gets with at the end of the episode. Reminding you that she's bi, I think she's gotten with other girls on the show before or she's referenced doing that in the past. Generally, Summer is meant to be like the horniest character on the show next to Rick. They set up the whole bit here where everybody at the club can somehow understand what Kawatos are really trying to say, even though they only verbalize it as open your mind. When Quiet picks up Summer, they have a bit of a joke about them hooking up while their Kawatos hook up. So for a brief second, you think that they're going to have like a four-way hookup. When they go to the private room at the club, zoom and enhance behind them here. This Kawato seems like it's frozen upside down, but remember, everybody at the club here bought their Kawatos on the black market, so it probably got attached in the wrong position upside down when they bought this Kawato. That's also probably why none of these Kawatos wind up speaking and they all look so depressed. Like, all the Kawatos look really depressed because they were stolen from other people. Morty also seems here like he understands that they're in danger, maybe because of his enhanced psychic powers, but Summer hasn't learned to decode what he says yet and doesn't pick up until it's too late. They introduce the main villain, Kenneth, who has Kawatos inside Kawatos. Let me know if you think he's a parody of a specific celebrity. He does have a weird Jesus haircut. Summer reminds you of how DTF she is, how horny she is, when the first thing she gets upset about is thinking that Kenneth has a girlfriend so they won't be able to hook up. I also love how deep they go on this whole Kawato joke, like they put a tiny Kawato bag over Morty's head. You can see the writers working on this episode, like how far can we take this Kawato joke? How about Kawatos inside Kawatos inside other Kawatos? They finally pay off Summer's Inspector Gadget ponytail upgrades, picking the lock in the unlocking sequence is her admitting that she doesn't appreciate Rick enough. Later, Rick also reveals it as other secret abilities, killing some of the thugs. Then when Beth tries to wake Rick up to get his help, they remind you about some of his own personal defenses and Inspector Gadget upgrades. Like, if she tried to touch him normally, she would have gotten her hand blown off. I'm assuming he turns some of them on and some of them off at times because he also has special defenses that literally, like, kill you if you come too close to him. Guarantee you're gonna die if you touch me and there's no afterlife. Everything just goes black. Don't do it. When he goes looking for Summer, he goes to the vending machine room. You see Summer's ghost goggles that he referenced earlier. There's a copy of Thor's hammer from the Marvel Universe. There's a green Magneto helmet. I'm not sure what the other devices are, so you can let me know what you think they are in the comments. The visor also might be a Cyclops helmet, too, that shoots a beam. The idea is that Rick will create whatever Morty or Summer asks for, and he'll put it in the vending machine. When he goes to the Morty's mind blowers room, they do a close up on a bunch of the vials, zoom and enhance, there's a pocket poo one, there's one that says time, one that says balls, there's a Stanford one that's a reference to Stanford Pines from Gravity Falls and the crossovers they've done on the show. If it wasn't clear, Gravity Falls is canon to Rick and Morty, they've been having crossover moments like this since season one, there are also a couple moments on Gravity Falls that could be looked at as Rick and Morty easter eggs too. A lot of the creators of both shows are also personal friends in real life, which is why a lot of those references crept up. A couple years ago, I did a much bigger video on all the Rick and Morty Gravity Falls crossover scenes, so I'll link it below in the description because it is pretty cool. There are a bunch more vials though, like this one says virginity, I don't know whose virginity it is, this one says micro tit, and this one just says lol. Inside the garage, the AI makes a joke about doing things for dramatic effect like black and white and also references the fact that its voice is based on Rick's dead wife when he says he doesn't like doing things for dramatic effect when in fact that's the whole reason why her voice sounds like his dead wife's voice. They make a bunch of Liam Neeson Taken references when they put Morty on the black market house where they prep them to be attached to the highest bidder. They continue the Taken references with Rick going full Liam Neeson, just going around beating people up looking for information. The whole bit about the Kawatos giving them special psychic powers is also from Total Recall, but the way they visualize Summer talking to Morty inside their mind space is based on Stranger Things when Eleven is using her powers. And inside their minds, Summer can hear Morty's normal full sentences because he's not verbalizing it. The whole bit about the black market selling the Kawatos is sort of a combination reference to the Taken movie and the Squid Game series. Summer makes another froth frisbee golf joke when she throws the laptop at the woman like a frisbee. And Rick breaks the fourth wall again when he says he rescues Morty at least seven times per season, another reference to them living in a fake TV show. They continue the Inspector Gadget references when Rick reveals he has a giant inflatable butt. Then there was actually a big reveal here in this part of the episode. Rick reveals the reason why he's so much harder on Summer, like making her do the chore wheel, is because he respects her more, thus treats her like an equal, and she reminds him of his dead wife. 
meaning that Diane's personality was a little bit more like this, which explains a lot. Also remember at the end of episode 5, after they killed Rick Prime, Evil Morty revealed that the only member of the family that he was actually afraid of was Summer. So they're trying to say that Summer is like a secret badass on the show. I think part of the idea too is that she just does not give an F, like she is totally unhinged, so she doesn't have limits the way that Morty has limits. I think the other even funnier part here too, when he's talking about Summer being like his dead wife, is saying that he treats Morty more like a dog. Then they start the whole bit with Kenneth's quados inside quados, and when Summer gets confused later, she was actually correct in saying that it would have been the fourth quado if that last one had survived and they hadn't dumped it back in the ocean. Like he kept saying, no wait, I have one more thing to reveal, like there was going to be another fourth quado inside that third quado. One of the other differences here too during their fight is that they reveal the second quado could speak normally unlike all the other quados that can only say, open your mind. Their really epic fight scene also turns into a parody of the They Live longer fight sequence with Roddy Roddy Piper versus Keith David. Reminder too that Keith David also voices the US president on Rick and Morty. Like I said, they try to take the Quado joke as far as they possibly can logically, and the second Quado whips out a knife. No idea where it got that knife, but the knife itself also has a smaller Quado knife inside the blade. They said at the missiles bit that they use later in the episode at the frisbee golf game and Rick makes a motion smoothing joke when they're trying to get the spider harness back. Motion smoothing is usually a reference to people putting motion smoothing or taking it off the settings in their TVs. Without getting too into the weeds about TV settings and what motion smoothing is, generally it makes things worse. Like it'll give all your TV shows, your movies, this weird soap opera effect. So if you can, turn off motion smoothing on your TVs. Then they pay off the whole bit with the Quado Morty spider harness, like he stays as Quado Morty and doesn't have Rick fix him, make him big again. And they pay off him trying to get super popular because it makes him super good at frisbee golf until he gets clowned on again for accidentally almost blowing everyone up with the missiles. Summer gets with that girl that she saved and then during the post credit scene they pay off the whole bit about the Squid Game parody in the Black Market Taken reference. All the rich buyers here are waiting to get their quados or already have them from the Taken house. There are masks, all this stuff, this room, everything is based on the Squid Game series. And apparently they get super pissed off when this other guy messes out their whole 69 bit like he makes the wrong kind of reference, like how dare you. There are a whole bunch of easter eggs and references so if you spotted any during the episode that I didn't talk about during the video just write them below in the comments and my full episode 8 video will post next week. There's a whole bunch of big stuff coming up so everyone click here for my Invincible Season 2 Episode 4 video and then click here for all my other Rick and Morty episodes. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.